Good morning, June. Good morning, Mr. Adams. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I was glad to get your note. My program for next semester has been bothering me. What have you planned to take? Well, you know how much I like my work in the commercial department. I thought perhaps I should cancel history and physics. I don't really need them and take all this practice and advanced dictation. I want to become a stenographer. Yes, that sounds like a reasonable plan. But what do you think stenographers do to earn a living? Have you actually visualized yourself in a secretarial position? What do you think the work would be like? Yes, I think I have an idea. If I were doing stenographic work in an office, I imagine I would I would do routine typing and form letters, check the work of others, and retype copy. I'd work regular hours, learn to handle new materials and duties, and do the work expected of me. If you don't hear from me, it would be impossible to make a definite promise to you as to how soon we can get well, that I'd make you take these files and whatever it is, a few days until the... Of course, Mr. Adams, there are monotonous jobs such as filing, but all clerical workers must do these things. Jones, I think I'll have to call you back as soon as I can get that That's fine. I'll give you a letter. And that's my idea of stenographic work, Mr. Adams. Yes, that's clerical work. But aren't there other types of clerical work that require more training, more skill, and further education? Perhaps in your case, June, it might be well to think beyond mere routine typing and filing and shorthand. But we don't have such courses at Westport High School. Where could I get training for other kinds of clerical work? And what other types of office jobs are there? Well, suppose we see if we can find the answers to your question. Let's see if Miss Harrison of the commercial department can help us get the information we need. All right. Miss Harrison, you're going into the city this afternoon, aren't you? Yes, I am, Mr. Adams. If June can be excused from classes, I wonder if you'd take her to Messon's office so that she can see some examples of uh, really advanced clerical work. Well, I think so. Miss Harrison, do you suppose I could talk with one of the private secretaries? who works for a top executive? Well, I'm sure that can be arranged with an acquaintance of mine who is a secretary. I'll call and make an appointment with her, June. I'm leaving on the 140 bus. Can you be ready then? Yes, I can, and thank you. Surely. Good morning, Messing Incorporated. Goodbye. Bye. Good morning, Messing Incorporated. Good morning, Mr. Benson. Yes, he is. Just a moment, please. There you are. Good morning, Messing Incorporated. Yes. All right. Would you like to talk to him? Mr. Peterson's gone. Good morning, Messing Incorporated. Good morning, Messing Incorporated. Yes, hold the line there, please. Does anybody I help you with? Yes, I have a telephone appointment with Miss Lee. Would you please tell her that Miss Harrison and Miss Woods are here? 
I'm sure he's expecting you to go right in. It's the first door on the left down the corridor. Thank you. Good morning, Messins Incorporated. Yes, hold the line there, please. Because this affair has so many ramifications, Mr. Messon thinks it would be easier for everyone if a meeting could be arranged. Oh, hello, Miss Harrison. Come on in, won't you? Hello, Miss Lee. And this is the young lady. Yes, this is June Woods, whom I talked to you about this morning. How do you do, Miss How do you do? I'd like to have her see how our real business office operates. I'm very glad to help her. In fact, I've arranged so that we can spend the next hour together. Won't you sit down, please? Well, thank you, but I have some important calls to make. You'll have to excuse me this time. I'll be back in about an hour. All right, Miss Harrison. Goodbye. 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 I'd like to have you see the routine clerical department first. Many of our girls begin their work with us in the following department after graduating from high school. Miss Lee is explaining to June the system employed in the filing department. It is necessary to have supervisors to direct the girls, as some of the work is not so simple. Although all of the girls are high school graduates and have had some training in accuracy and speed. Employers depend greatly on the recommendations of counselors and teachers, as the applicant school grades are also very important in obtaining a job. In the stenographic department, some of the girls are transcribing shorthand notes and others are doing routine typing, such as form letters that can't be duplicated, making copies when several carbons are needed, and cutting stencils for duplicating machines. The average typist has had a year or two of training beyond high school, and many of them are from junior college commercial departments. 70 words a minute is considered good typing speed. However, it is not uncommon to find typists who can do 90 words per minute or more. Depending upon the ability and alertness of the individual, these girls will become proficient stenographers and gain promotion to different departments as their experience becomes greater. The duplicating department is a busy one. This machine is electrically operated and used for short runs, reproduction of drawings, graphs, and the employee's weekly newspaper. Also, manually operated machines of the same type are used. For work requiring hundreds of copies, this duplicating machine is used. Training for the operation of these machines is obtained either at special commercial schools at night or gained while employed in this department. It is not uncommon to find men doing this type of work. However, girls are preferred on routine jobs which require speed and accuracy. There is still a bookkeeping department, but it looks as though the girls are in a hurry to get back to Miss Lee's office. And I'm still amazed at the amount of ability a girl needs to do many of these jobs. Let's sit down, shall we? Thank you. What about your own job, Miss Lee? You're an office manager as well as head secretary, aren't you? Yes. One of my most important duties is to make appointments with the president. It takes judgment to tell which caller should be given 15 minutes and which one should take his problems to someone else in the firm. Sometimes it takes every ounce of tact I can muster to keep everyone contented. Another important job of mine is to read and abstract materials from contracts and papers so that the president can tell in a moment whether he needs to do any more research before making a business decision. My college training has proved its importance in this work. Are you planning to go to college? Oh, I thought about it. Dad said he would help me, but I haven't made up my mind yet. I'm going to talk to Mr. Adams about it tomorrow. Excuse me, please. Miss Lee? Yes, Mr. Messon. Right away. Well, I see that you're busy and I can't take any more of your time. Thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye. And good luck. Well, June, did you have a good time on your trip to Messon's office yesterday? Yes, I did. But, Mr. Adams, do you think I could make a go of it? Now, why do you ask that? Well, I talked to Miss Lee, who has just the kind of a job I like someday, and she said that it was necessary to have college training for that job. So I've talked to Mother and Father, and they think that I might go to college. Do you think I should? 
Before I answer your question, suppose we take a look at your experience and record. Then you and I can think through to an answer. Your high score on the scholastic aptitude test indicates that you can do good work in college. Moreover, your high score on the clerical aptitude test indicates that you can become a good secretary. Mr. Adams, does that definitely mean that I'm capable of doing good work in college? Yes, June. You have the fundamental ability to do good work in college. Moreover, your fine record in school shows that you use that ability efficiently. I think that I'm genuinely interested in secretarial work, and I'm more confident of my interest after talking to Miss Lee. But some of my classmates tell me that their vocational interests have changed. I'm afraid that I may change, too. Your interests may change, June, as you grow more mature and acquire new experiences. But on our test of vocational interests, your likes and dislikes are similar to those of successful women in secretarial occupations. I would say that your choice of secretarial work is a good one, and that you will most likely continue to be interested. However, you must remember that you will have to start at the bottom and work up to that position. You realize from your visit with Miss Lee, of course, that there are many, many ways in which you can use your interest in commercial occupations. Later on, you may even wish to shift to some other line of work. You should not worry about the narrow, specific type of job until you've had two, three years more for the training. But Mr. Adams, Miss Lee stressed, and I saw for myself, the girls in offices work closely with each other and must be well liked. Do you think that I have the personality for that type of work? Suppose you tell me what things you have done with other people. What activities have you been participating in in school? I've been in so many things. I'm secretary of the freshman class. I was elected president of my campfire group. Last month, I read and prepared an article on the American Indian before the School Historical Society. For the past two years, I've been social chairman in my church. And last summer, I was cabin leader at camp. Mother says I'm in too many things. Well, that would certainly seem to indicate the right kind of personality for getting along with persons of your own age. Have you worked with older persons? You remember that I did some work in a law office last summer. The people there liked my work and were very pleasant and nice to me, but I don't know whether that means much. Oh, yes, it does. That's fine. I can't predict with certainty just how your personality may develop. But what you say points to the likelihood that you will continue to be sociable and cooperative. There's one other question that I wanted to ask you. What about financial support? Will you be able to get further training? I was talking with Father last night, and he said that he would be able to pay for most of my expenses. I may have to earn some money myself. A good many college students do work for pay, although it is desirable to spend most of your time in studying, at least for the first year. When you are ready to go to college, I will be glad to write your counselors and ask them to help you find work. Where had you planned on going to college? I don't know. I suppose to the state university, since it's so close and I can live at home. Do you see anything wrong with my plan? No. You can get good training there. Miss Harrison thinks very highly of their courses in secretarial training. I have the bulletins describing their business courses. Uh, take them and study them. It's a good idea to begin planning now, even a year ahead of time. But Mr. Adams, I want to do something now. Oh, but there are many things that you can do right now, June. I suggest that you talk these matters over with your parents, and if they would like to see me, I'll be very glad to talk with them. Oh, that'll be fine. Tomorrow, we can go over your program for next quarter. And then, later, we can check your courses with the entrance requirements to the university. Next semester, I'd like to give you some of these books and pamphlets to read. I'd like to talk to you again about this. And I'll want to talk with you, June, at least twice each semester. You see, this problem of making a choice is not a simple one, and it cannot be decided in a single day. We'll review your tentative choice as you learn more about yourself and the world in which you will live and work. Thank you very much. You've helped me a lot. And you're welcome, June. I'll see you tomorrow.